Today we'll derive the continuity equation, which is the Eulerian form of mass conservation, but first we'll review a few key concepts from kinematics. Solids deform and fluids flow. Deformation is measured by the strain tensor, which is derived from the deformation gradient tensor that includes the effects of rigid body rotations. Similarly, flow is measured by the rate of deformation or rate of strain tensor, which is derived from the velocity gradient tensor that includes the effects of rigid body rotations or spins. A Lagrangian description of the velocity vector is given by V as a function of the material coordinates capital X and time t, which is the partial derivative of the displacement U as a function of capital X and t with respect to t with capital X held constant, which is equal to del little x del t uh, with little x as a function of capital X and t. This is the velocity as seen by the convecting particle or a material observer. In the Eulerian description of the motion, the velocity v is a function of the current coordinates little x and t, which is del u of little x and t del t, or del little x of little x and t del t. And this is the velocity as seen by a fixed spatial observer. Now, the material coordinates capital X are fixed for a material particle, whereas the current coordinates change in time as the material point moves in space. Given a time-varying scalar field variable phi, defined in the Lagrangian sense as phi equals capital G of capital X and T, or in the Eulerian sense as lowercase g of lowercase x and T, then the rate of change of phi, as seen by a particle moving in the continuum, is given by the material derivative of phi. The material derivative phi dot, or capital D phi dt, is equal to del capital G del t, holding capital X constant, which using the chain rule is del lowercase g del x, del lowercase x del t, plus del lowercase g del t. But del lowercase x del t is v, so this is del g del x times v plus del g del t. Or, in terms of phi, we can write that the material derivative capital D phi dt is equal to v dot grad phi plus del phi del t. The acceleration is the material derivative of the velocity v dot or capital D v dt, which therefore equals del v del t plus v dot grad v. Or, in index notation, the components of the acceleration are ai equals capital D V I D T equals del V I del T plus V K del V I del X K. The first term is called the transient acceleration and only occurs in an unsteady flow. The second term is the convective acceleration and can even be seen in a steady flow. Last time we introduced the key kinematic quantities for flows, starting with the velocity gradient tensor L, defined by dv equals L dot dx. So the components of L, Lij, are the velocity gradients del vi del xj. Then applying the symmetry decomposition, we see that L can be decomposed into the sum of a symmetric part, 1 half L plus L transpose, and a skew part, 1 half L minus L transpose, where the symmetric part is D, the rate of deformation tensor, and the skew part is W, the spin tensor. We also introduced the vorticity, which is the curl of the velocity vector, and showed that the components of the vorticity are related to the velocity gradients by Eijk del Vk del Xj, and that the components of the spin are given by one half Eijk Wi. As our final piece of review before introducing the derivation of the continuity equation, let's revisit an example of flow, of a Kuwait flow where the velocity v1 is sx2 and the other two components are zero. So the velocity gradient tensor has 
uh, just one s in the one two position, and its transpose has just one s in the two one position. So the rate of deformation tensor is one half l plus l transpose, or has components l i j plus l j i divided by two, which means that d i j has components s over two in the one two and two one positions, and zero everywhere else. Meanwhile, w i j, which is one half of l i j minus l j i, has components s upon 2 in the 1, 2 location and minus s upon 2 in the 2, 2, 1 location. The vorticity vector is the curl of V, so its components are E, I, J, K, L, K, J, which will look like del V3 del X2 minus del V2 del X3, del V1 del X3 minus del V3 del X1, and del v2 del x1 minus del v1 del x2. Now looking at L, all of these terms are zero except for the last one, leaving us with wi equals 0, 0, minus s. We can use the equation for the spin tensor in terms of the vorticity vector, wijk equals minus 1 half eijk wi, and applying that we find that we indeed get 0, s upon 2, 0, minus s upon 2, 0, 0. So now let's derive the Eulerian form of mass cons conservation for a continuum. So the Eulerian form of conservation of mass is the form that's typically used for fluid flows and is often referred to as the continuity equation. So stating mass conservation in words from the point of view of a fixed Eulerian spatial observer watching fluid flow into and out of a fixed spatial region, which is often referred to in fluid mechanics as a control volume, we can write the following. The rate of change of mass contained in the fixed spatial region R must equal the rate at which mass flows into that region R across its boundary S. So mathematically, the rate of change of mass would be the integral of the rate of change of density with respect to volume. So the triple integral over r of d rho dt d little v. And then the rate at which mass flows into the region, if we subtract that from both sides, we would now add the rate at which mass flows out of the region. And that's given by the surface integral of rho times v dot n ds, where v is the velocity vector, n is the outward normal to s. So v dot n represents the component of the velocity that is going out away from, across the surface, away from r. And that velocity is convecting mass with it of density rho. So multiplying rho times that component of the velocity gives the rate of change at which mass is leaving r which is the negative of, which, of the rate at which mass is entering R, and hence it's on the other side. So now, applying the divergence theorem to convert this surface integral into a volume integral, we obtain that the triple integral over R of d rho dt plus the divergence of rho v with respect to volume is equal to zero. And again, since our region R is entirely arbitrary, that means the integrand itself, the terms inside the integral, must be identically satisfied. This term must be identically zero. And so we get del rho del t plus div rho v is equal to zero. 
and this is our first version of the Eulerian form of conservation of mass. Now writing this in index notation, this would be del rho del t plus vi del rho del xi plus rho del vi del xi, because this divergence of a product will result in two terms when we expand the derivative. Notice these first two terms, del rho del t plus vi del rho del xi, are the same as the material derivative, capital D rho dt. And the second term, del vi del xi, is just the divergence of v times rho. So this is the second form of the conservation of mass for an Eulerian description. Now, again, if we have an incompressible material, then the density from the point of view of the material is constant. In other words, the material derivative of the density d rho dt is equal to zero. And therefore, our conservation of mass simplifies to div v, which is del vi del xi, which is also DII, the trace of the rate of deformation tensor, must all be zero. So that is the Eulerian form of conservation of mass for an incompressible continuum. Let's do an exercise making use of the Eulerian form of mass conservation. If a flow field has a density distribution given by rho equals k times x2 and velocity components given by v equals 2x1, 1, and 0. And whereabouts in the flow field is the flow at steady state? Is it a at x1 equals minus k, b at x2 equals k upon 2, c at x1 plus x2 equals k, d at x2 equals minus 1 half, or e at x1 equals minus 1 half? So to solve this, we make use of the continuity equation for which we will need the divergence of the velocity, which is just 2. So that's del 2x1 with respect to x1 plus 0 plus 0, and the gradient of rho, which will be 0, k, 0. Now, the continuity equation is del rho del t plus the divergence of rho times v is equal to 0. And expanding that, we get del rho del t plus rho times div v plus v dot grad p is equal to zero. Which then gives us that del rho del t plus k times x2 times 2, divergence of v, plus 1 times k is equal to zero. Now the problem is at steady state when del rho del t is equal to zero, which will mean that 2 times kx2 plus k is equal to zero, which gives us that 2x2 is equal to minus 1, or x2 equals minus 1 half, which was choice D. You may recall when we derived conservation of linear momentum that we needed to take the material time derivative of a volume integral, and we made the substitution that that was equal to the volume integral of the material time derivative. Now, in fact, that substitution depends on a theorem called Reynolds transport theorem. And while we won't derive Reynolds transport theorem per se, what we will do is prove the result that the material time derivative of a volume integral, in this case of the variable phi, uh, is in fact equal to the volume integral of the material derivative. So phi here is the amount of a quantity capital phi measured per unit mass. In this case, the material derivative of the integral represents the rate of change of the amount of capital phi which is associated with the particles that instantaneously occupy the region capital R at time t. 
Hence, the rate of increase of the amount of capital phi within the fixed spatial region R is equal to the sum of the rate of increase of capital phi associated with the particles instantaneously inside R together with the net rate of influx of phi into the region R across its boundary S. So writing this mathematically, we would say that the triple integral over R of del phi rho del t integrated with respect to volume is equal to the material derivative d dt of the triple integral with respect to r of phi rho dv minus the surface integral over s of phi rho n dot v ds. Remembering that because n is an outward normal, the minus sign reflects the fact that this is the net e flux from the region of the quantity capital phi. Now applying the divergence theorem and rearranging so that we convert the surface integral into a volume integral, we would obtain that the material derivative d dt of the volume integral over r of phi rho with respect to volume is equal to the volume integral over r of del del t of phi rho plus the divergence from the divergence theorem of phi rho times the velocity vector v integrated over the volume. Now in the case when phi is equal to 1, the integral on the right hand side is the rate of change of mass and the material derivative of this integral is 0. Hence the integral on the right hand side in the case when phi equals 1 must be 0 for all regions R and thus the integral on the right hand side itself is 0. Now in general when phi is not equal to 1 we can expand the integrand on the right hand side as well to get phi times del rho del t plus div rho plus rho times del phi del t plus v dot grad phi. Now notice that this first term is in fact the Eulerian form of mass conservation times phi, uh, which is therefore zero by uh, the conservation of mass. And the second term is just rho times the material derivative of phi. Therefore, we've shown that the material derivative d dt of the volume integral over r of phi rho with respect to volume dv is equal to the volume integral over r of the material derivative phi with respect to t integrated over the volume times rho. So this is a special case of Reynolds transport theorem and it's a result that we make use of in the derivation of some of the equations of continuum mechanics. Uh, it looks like it could be true in general, but it actually requires a conservation of mass to prove. It's not important that you memorize or be able to reproduce this derivation. I'm just showing it to you so that you know that no approximation or error was made in our derivations of the governing equations.